Fighting games have been one of the most cutthroat and competitive esports out there. They not only have some of the highest physical demands out of all video games, but they also request that the players engage in some of the craziest mind games imaginable. The release of Street Fighter 2 in February of 1991 started an influx of people who wanted to be the best, effectively starting the fighting game community. This drive to beat the person on the other end of the cabinet was the factor that made people keep coming back to this game. Almost 30 years later, the fighting game community, now dubbed the FGC for short, has bloomed for various different games. Anything from Street Fighter, Tekken, Guilty Gear, Smash Bros, and Dragon Ball Fighters all have their respective communities that have kept the genre going. Communication is key when it comes to building these grassroots communities. Not only do veterans constantly welcome newbies with a smile, you can look into the actual gameplay and see. We have communication in every aspect of the FGC, and it's something that I don't see talked about too often. Funny games are often described as an intricate chess match where physical prowess and mind games are key. Aspects such as footsies, pressure, conditioning, and more all play into how these games perform when played at a top level. Fighting games, generally speaking, are fought one-on-one -on -one with an almost non-existent luck factor. Many commonplace factors of interpersonal communication are found in these fighting games. In any given tournament, we see examples of kinesics, proxemics, and more. Understanding your opponent is key to any competitive setting, and the fighting game scene is no different. We are constantly seeing competitors analyze their opponents on and off the field. We constantly see people sizing up their opponents, trying to see if they can throw them off their game even before the match starts. The first notable example of one of these interpersonal theories is kinesics. We constantly see how composed or rattled a competitor is by their facial expressions and how they look physically. Kinesics are facial expressions, body and eye movements including posture, gestures, walking style, smiling, and pupil dilation. In this clip here, we can see how composed both MKLeo and Zachary are. MKLeo is the current best player in the world at Smash Ultimate, and Zachary is a 17-year-old Japanese player who is currently ranked 12th. Before the set and during game one, we see Zachary confident as he recognizes who he's playing up against and doesn't take any risky plays. Zachary wins game one and stays calm. During the next few games, we see Zachary's face change and he physically looks more stressed. Fast forward to the last game of the set where both players only have one more game to win before they move on to the semifinals. The first half of the game goes by and Zachary is in the lead. Zachary is leaning forward in his chair and you can practically feel how tense this guy is. However, MKLeo is able to pull it back, and Zachary has the most emotional loss of his career. Obviously, this is a much more extreme example, but I think it proves the point nevertheless. Next, we have proxemics. Proxemics are the use of space, including conversational distances and territory. If you've ever been to a fighting game local, you know just how cramped these spaces can be. Typically shoved into the back of a local game store, we see people being extremely close and extremely uncomfortable. Now, emotions run hot in these scenarios for a variety of reasons. Not only are you likely to be very close to people who you're uncomfortable with, but the temperature is more than likely skyrocketing because that's what happens when you put a handful of sweaty nerds in a room together. However, if you look at big tournaments such as EVO, CEO, and Low Tier City, you can see how open and unrestricted some of these players are when they're put in a more comfortable environment. This affects the overall stress level of the player as they feel more welcome when they have their own space. These types of tournaments are usually held in convention centers and hotels, so there's far more room for everyone. Factors like temperature are far less likely to bother anyone in these settings. The next part that is crucial to understanding communication in fighting games is game knowledge. Knowing your game is extremely important. A Street Fighter player needs to know fighting game basics, when to attack, when to defend, and what moves work in what situation. That's just how the game is meant to be played. Smash players need to know character matchups and movement. Dragon Ball players need to know all of their combos and what characters they can use. Fighting games are often about choosing the right option at the right time. Are they going to jump? Time to use an anti-air attack. Are they going to grab? Time to throw out a quick jab to stop them. Once you start to understand a certain game, you start to recognize the cast and you realize what works in the current context of the game. Examples of this correlate to a form of uncertainty reduction theory. Uncertainty has been defined as the inability to predict or explain someone's attitudes. Usually used in the context of relationships, we see a different way it is used in the FGC. Confidence and knowing what to do are arguably the two most important aspects while in a match. You can reduce your uncertainty by doing things such as conditioning, pressuring, and taunting your opponent. You do whatever you need to do in order to get the outcome you want. This makes you feel more comfortable and more confident as a side effect. In a given situation in-game, you need to find a way to choose the best option possible. This is usually done by learning strategies that your opponent won't expect. More on that later, though. 
The motivation to reduce uncertainty is because you want to win the game, obviously. The mind games at work here have various factors that influence the match, so you need to try to predict your opponent as best as possible. However, whatever you do, you need to find a way to confidently make a play that is an answer to what your opponent does. Let's say in a game of Smash you notice that the person you're playing against always jumps when they try to get back on stage. The correct option would be to jump and attack your opponent next time they're at ledge in order to predict their jump. There is a lot of long and confusing scenarios such as this that come as second nature if you spend time in a game. Being able to punish your opponent, like how you caught that jump there, is a side effect of putting in practice and understanding the game and your opponent to a much deeper level than what you would normally expect. Power as a communication concept is another large aspect that you truly only understand if you have beaten someone in a fighting game. Everyone that's ever touched a fighting game has a memory of how they trashed their younger sibling in a game with basically no mercy. You were in charge, you dominated the game. Power goes back into character choice and mind games, however. Objective power is something that is extremely prevalent to this. Objective power is the authority associated with factors such as position, strength, weaponry, and wealth. In a sense, this is displayed between the two opponents. If someone is playing against the best player in the world, the indirect power is already showcasing itself. This is a mind game all on its own in regards to pressure and how power is viewed in a competitive sense. Power is also showcased via character selection. Put plainly, some characters are just better than others. For example, in Street Fighter 4, Dan is arguably the worst character in the game, while Evil Ryu and Yun are considered as two of the best. Oh! DJ takes first round on Dan. Dr. D taking it out. Alright, here we go. Round two. Boyos. Ladies. This is a more literal sense of power, as playing a bad character may indirectly cost you the game. Another example of this would be character choice and counterpicking. This can be seen as expectancy violation theory. The theory was extended to encompass all types of behavioral violations, positive and negative. As I've already stated, you want to throw off your opponent by almost any means necessary. You can see this happen in character matchups. Sometimes playing a more uncommon character can be just what you need in order to pull off a win. Oh, he looks really good, like top 10 potentially, but- What? What are you doing? My friend, Wolf was actually you... not bad. What? All right. This is a what? character that is debatable. A lot of people have been debating if this character is actually really low. At a high level, every fighting game has what's called a meta. This basically determines the best characters in the game that you essentially need to use in order to win at a top level. In Dragon Ball Fighters, almost every top level player has Kid Goku, Bardock, and a character they like on their team. Every Smash 4 player played Bayonetta or Cloud. Sure, this can get stagnant, but every once in a great while, someone tries to switch that up. After playing Bayonetta after Bayonetta in Smash 4, you get adjusted to only playing them. Every now and again, someone dares to change the status quo. The most notable example of this is Infiltration vs. P.L. Balrog. Infiltration is on his tournament game, but he gambles it all on Hakan. In Street Fighter 4, you will find Hakan at the bottom of every tier list. He's undeniably one of the worst characters in the game. P.R. Balrog has probably played against dozens of Akumas, Infiltration's main character. In order to throw off Balrog, Infiltration switches to Hakan, the greasy wrestler, and makes the most famous fighting game comeback of all time. Just out of range. Oh, trying to bait it out. Whoa, crazy stuff from PR Balrog gets away with it. Living to fight another day, but looking a little bit zany. Goes for the overhead. Great no! one. That's going to be it. That's going to be it. Infiltration with Hakan. Overall, power and game knowledge are two things that are inseparable from fighting games and are always something to keep in mind when talking about communication in the FGC. Identity is imperative to understanding the FGC. The best players in the world often act as conduits for the characters in the eyes of the community. MKLeo is seen as a representative for all Joker players in Smash. Same goes for PL Balrog, well, for Balrog players. But identity can go even deeper than the characters shown on screen. Gaming has become increasingly mainstream, which means more and more people have gained access and started learning about fighting games. The overall population of the FGC has changed from almost exclusively men to... still almost exclusively men. However, there are more women joining the community day after day. Corey Gaming has a fantastic video about some notable females such as Yu Yu and Tanu Kana who have joined the FGC and started shredding through tournaments playing Tekken. In this video, they express what their experience has been like thus far. They found it hard to make friends as a woman in the scene because they often feel trivialized thanks to the men in their local arcades and tournaments. As this group of women became better at the game, they established a collective self-fulfilling prophecy. As they were getting stronger, they finally overcame a huge hurdle and convinced themselves mentally they were just as good as anyone else. They started to behave in a way that reinforced the image they had of themselves and became great. 
This mindset proved extremely useful for them because they have done nothing besides get better at the game of choice. Tekken. This is an interesting case study of identity management. In the interview, these women described their feelings about how they had to present themselves. They felt that just because they were women in gaming that they had to hold themselves to a higher standard. The pressure was on them and they were more than happy to accept the challenge. Identity is something that is very important to any community, but also it's been shown that people can become known because of their identity in the FGC. As you can see, communication is imperative to understanding aspects of fighting games. Over the course of this video, I've highlighted just a few examples of interpersonal comm in the FGC. Concepts such as kinesics and proxemics to expectancy violation in identity can constantly be seen in these games. Fighting games offer a variety of fun and interesting ways to break things down. Sure, it's fun to beat the tar out of your friends in Street Fighter, but it's also important to realize what goes into that. Thanks for watching.